All right. Well, hello. I'm Alejandro uh, Ranchal Pedrosa, and I'm going to be talking about how Filecoin is going to be getting faster finality, or it's already getting faster finality. Um, we can just go through this. So first, what's the status quo, right? What's Filecoin at? So the protocol, the consensus protocol of Filecoin called Specific Consensus, it's a longest chain type of protocol, which means that consistency in a blog is probabilistic. That, what that means is that the confidence in a blog no, uh, not getting out of the heaviest chain as a result of a reorg grows over time. And that implicitly means you need to wait an amount of time for a blog to be considered final, so irreversible. And in the case of Falcon, some uh, longest chain protocols do not prescribe a particular value for finalization, like Bitcoin, right? That recommends six blocks, but it's up to you to decide how many blocks you want to wait for to consider your transaction final. In the case of Filecoin, however, uh, there is a, an actual value that is embedded in the implementation, which is kind of an upper bound of finalization. So you shouldn't wait longer than that because you're not going to get more security because the system assumes this time to consider anything final. That value is 900 epochs. An epoch is, so in Filecoin, time is discretized into 30 second slots that we call epochs. And so after 900 epochs, a transaction is considered final by the system itself. So Filecoin is not really a chain of blocks, it's a chain of tip sets. A tip set is a set of blocks that share the same epoch and the, chain, and the same parent tip set. So for example, if we want to finalize, we want to like, if we're interested in the finalization of this epoch, um, what Falcon will do is it will like wait 900 epochs and at epoch E plus 900, the epoch E will be considered final. Again, your application could wait less, but it's still going to be hours probably, like exchanges take hours, and there's a huge uh, product blocker for the Falcon ecosystem, right? So we have IPC building layer twos, which, you know, once you're in the layer two, you can have your own latency. You can basically have your centralized system if you want to, but still to get deposits and withdrawals or interactions with other smart contracts or other layer twos, you're going to need to wait this amount of time, which is ridiculous, right? For any reasonable application nowadays, any application that now, you know, FVM, the file converting machine came, uh, became a reality last year. And of course, there's so many applications that are like, prohibited from being deployed because of these long finalization time, or even like exchanges, bridges uh, to, you know, for interoperability with other chains, they're all being blocked by this long finalization time. So a bunch of people are waiting for this uh, faster finality in Falco. Uh, an example, very simple example, so that somebody's a bit more distracted. So in an example of a deposit, we have Bob that wants to deposit maybe four fields in some exchange. So here is an example of three very famous changes. All of them require you to wait 100 minutes to get a deposit, right? This is it's not ideal, definitely. So before, in, before I get into like the details of how we get faster finality, let's first showcase the results, the TLDR of the results. So the first thing that we did, the first step into faster finality is what we call the finality calculator. The good news about the finality calculator is that you do not need, like we don't need to make any changes to the core protocol. So we just need to be smarter about what is information that is already available. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. And with that, we can already get finalization within 15 minutes. And this is something that can happen right now. So your application can get much faster finality. Uh, but then on top of that, we're actually doing changes to the core consensus protocol. And that's what we call F3, which stands for Fast Finality in Falcon. And this is uh, at the moment being implemented. We're working on the implementation. And it's going to come like in Q end of Q2, beginning of Q3. And once it's in, in like mainnet, it's going to provide finalization in tens of seconds. But not only that, it's also going to provide finality certificates that can be verified by light clients or other chains that are succinct. And that's why we believe that F3 is a game changer for the Falcon ecosystem. So the finality calculator. Um, so the first thing that we did when we look at getting faster finality in Falcon is ask ourselves, well, why not have epochs in the first place? So we look at the, at the docs the history books of Falcon, wow, how did they come up with this number? And it turns out that they, they come up with this number because they were looking for a worst case, very safe uh, value to, to embed in the system because the Falcon client, so the power table, the membership of the system in Falcon is part of the state of the system. And the Falcon clients assume that this power table uh, doesn't suffer reorgs, it's final. So they need to subscribe a particular value that will work in all cases. So it needs to be a static worst case asymptotic value. Um, but in most cases, you know, you will be able to assert based on the information that you have available that you are actually not in the worst case. And that's what the finality calculator is about. Not all tip sets are created equal. So for example, if you have five consecutive epochs 
where in each epoch you have seen two blocks. In expectation, in every epoch, there's five proposers selected. So if you have seen two blocks consecutively for five epochs, you don't have as much confidence in that chain being the heaviest chain as if you have seen five consecutive epochs with five blocks, right? Because the probability of there being a different chain is much lower. Uh, so in the good case, actually, most uh, epochs, you will be able to see like tip sets that contain five blocks. So in the good case, we're actually going to see a really favorable scenario to reduce finality. And what that means is that we can actually get finality within about 15 minutes with the same security, just being smarter about what we're seeing. And this is all information that a full node already has available for himself. Uh, when we did this analysis, we basically are in some epoch at the current time, so the current epoch, and we are asking ourselves about the finality probability of an older epoch, right? The, the epoch that we're observing. And to do this analysis, we look at three different uh, times. So one is the distant past. That will be everything that happened before the observable epoch, right? The epoch that we're considering. The other one is the recent past. So that's everything that happened between the observable epoch and the current epoch. And the other one is the future. So of course, for the future, there's nothing you can do, right? You just assume the worst case. For the distant past, you might be missing some information that you kind of have a filter, like chains that you don't consider the heaviest chain anymore, things like this. Um, but you, you still can like, kind of like look at some stuff. And from the recent past, you have very readable information. And so based on, you know, there's a FIP in the Falcon Improvement Proposal repo, you can look at all the data and, and like all the design of how we calculate this. Uh, but essentially, if we can reduce seven and a half, we can reduce seven and a half hours to 15 minutes in the good case, and what that means as well is that if exchanges are happy with always waiting for 100 minutes, considering the worst case, then they surely will be happy using the finality calculator to finalize things after five minutes. So that's quite good, you know. Um, it's also, it's, wait, this is, okay, yeah, this one. Um, so yeah, ours was horrible, right? It's uh, like in, in, the, in this current age of blockchains with the FVM and whatnot, ours was just a huge product blocker. Minutes is pretty good. You know, it's actually probably the lower bound you can get in longer chain protocols. Uh, but it's not good enough. You know, we want something better. What we want is seconds. Well, yeah, what we want is seconds. But we cannot obtain faster finality with a longer chain protocol. We cannot obtain seconds, finality in seconds and be safe. And even some finality gadgets like Ethereum still take six minutes to finalize anything. So what we came up is, well, we came to the conclusion that we need a new architecture. Uh, but let's justify that, right? When we started looking at the possibility of having a new architecture, we set out four main goals. So we want fast finality, but we don't want fast finality to come at the cost of less security. You can always get that if you just use the current system and just lower the finalization time. But that's not what we want, of course. And like some, a very common thing that tends to happen, if you fix the requirement of low latency, but also fix high security, normally what suffers is the assumptions, right? You just have very strong assumptions. So maybe your adversary is weaker or something like that. We also don't want that. Or put differently, we are designing this in a modular way. Some other parts of the system might change later, or even this model can be used by other longer chain protocols. So we don't want this model to be the reason why the system has strong assumptions. So even if the system has strong assumptions, we don't want this model to happen. And we also want to follow the path of least resistance. Filecoin has been around for a while. It's been battle tested. It has a strong community. We don't want to make strong changes, big changes to, this, to the system, right? Um, so with that in mind, we went out and had a look at uh, what other projects are doing. Uh, Fork Choice Protocols already went through it. We're just not going to get faster than five, six minutes at least. Um, then we look at avalanches of sample voting. Very interesting initially because it gets finality within like second, a second, and it scales very well. But um, it assumes strong synchrony and, um, and yeah, so apart, apart from assuming strong synchrony, it assumes an adversary that controls at most 20% of the power table, which is actually not that bad when you have a really uh, big number of participants in the power table. But we believe for the sizes that we're talking about in Falcon, like within the thousands, we can do better than 20%. And of course, uh, the finality gadgets like Ethereum's, as I went through, is still not fast enough, but also it hasn't been proven safe yet. And there are some other security concerns because this assumes a strong synchrony that we felt we don't want to assume. And of course, BFT protocols, the holy grail of distributed systems, have been studied for a while, for decades. They're fast and resilient, but it's definitely not the path of little systems to change from a longer chain protocol into a BFT-based consensus protocol. So then we ask ourselves, well, you know, the last two, the finality gadgets and BFT protocols, 
kind of like have like orthogonal like properties that are desirable. So can we just have a BFT protocol as a finality gadget? And that's precisely what F3 is about. So just a small schematic of how F3 changes the architecture. So this would be a schematic of how uh, the longer chain uh, expected consensus works. So there's some blocks that come from the network into a process that we call the EC sinker. And basically this process adds the block to the local view of the chain. And then there's some fault choice rule that selects the heavier chain, right? In this case, the one with the head block H. So what we do with the F3 component is we add this new module that just reads the head of the chain. Then it uh, proposes it as input to an instance of a consensus protocol that we have designed that we call Gossip BFT. And then it outputs some other block as final. So in this case, the head chain, the head of the heavier chain according to this node is H, which is what it proposes for the instance of Gossip BFT. But the output of Gossip BFT is not H, it's B. So then this block will be marked then as final, and which means that it will always be part of the heaviest chain. So that's how F3 changes the architecture. In terms of the integration, good news is uh, the absolutely necessary uh, interaction, like API calls that F3 requires, are already part, are already like functionality that the Falcon client provides, which is reading the head of the heaviest chain and marking a tip set as final. In the case of Falcon, this is something that's provided for, no, for users to be able to checkpoint a tip set that is of interest for them. Uh, but it's basically the same functionality. However, for practical purposes and implementation, we explicitly updated the folk choice rule more than use this API call. And instead of pulling, uh, we are actually pushing from uh, the Falcon client or every change to the head of the chain because of some optimizations. And of course, we need to implement from scratch the consensus, the BFT consensus protocol. But this consensus protocol can be done completely independently, right? The implementation. So it doesn't need to change any of the code that exists. Now, I should justify why yet another BFT consensus protocol, right? Uh, I could spend more time on this, but just to go quickly, it's not that new. It's actually based on Russia's binary Byzantine agreement, a synchronous binary Byzantine agreement that was proposed decades ago. It has been battle tested and is well known. The reason why we chose it is because it's very, very simple. Uh, it also has some elements of PBFT, but much simpler. We don't have a view change because we don't have a leader, which is what makes it very simple. Everybody executes the same protocol. The same protocol has executes in rounds. Uh, each round has between three and four communication steps, which are very, all of them are very similar and execute almost the same logic, same message format, uh, and similar message validation as well. Um, so it makes it very simple to implement and to reason about and also to prove correct. Um, but again, it's, but also it's robust to the Eclipse attacks, the now service attacks. And we actually tolerate a very strong adversary for censorship attacks and long range attacks. Um, and then of course, the main goal of fast finality, what we want is a protocol with low latency. Well, it's a protocol that only requires changes a, lin a linear number of lip 2 p messages for termination, of which uh, the size is linear in bits. We can actually decrease that to constant size in bits uh, with some trade-offs, uh, which means com changes to the network layer. We don't want to make changes to other parts of the product of the system, so we are going with uh, just a linear size in the in the in the, in the messages. Um, but yeah, we can also change just a constant number of messages using committees. Um, and of course, it's low latency because in the good case, it only takes three to four asynchronous steps to finalize. It actually can be done in just two, but we decide to take three or four, and I'm going to explain why. So this is how the best case scenario of Gossip BFT will work. So we have two steps, one called prepare, the other one called commit. So in the prepare step, you get lucky, you know, suppose we have four participants of which one is Byzantine. And Byzantine in this case, he just doesn't communicate. The other three get lucky and they propose exactly the same block to finalize, then great. In the commit step, they have, they have seen a strong quorum of messages with the same value. So they propose exactly that same value and that value can be decided. We added another step called decide that is not really necessary. So termination was already guaranteed with agreement at the end of the commit step. But adding the decide step on termination first provides uh, tolerance to long range attacks against a 66% adversary, whereas otherwise it will be tolerance to an adversary controlling 33%. And also is very useful for the uh, succinct, verifiable finality certificates. Um, then, yeah, this would be the certificate. So it would just be the aggregated signatures of the decide step then uh, sometimes you don't get that lucky, right? Sometimes different people come with different inputs to finalize, and so you cannot finalize in the first round. 
So in that case, you go to a new round. And then the question is, who should change, right? Who should the one who proposed the yellow block um, switch to the purple and for like termination to be guaranteed, or should the ones who propose purple switch to the yellow for termination to be guaranteed? Well, what we do is we have a new step that comes in only after the second round that we call the converge step. And this one is a synchronous step. What happens is that everybody uh, generates a VRF ticket and attaches to their proposed value the VRF ticket. And so at the end of the synchronous timeout, every participant selects the value associated to the lowest VRF ticket they have seen. And that, so in this case, for example, the lowest VRF ticket will be held by this node that proposed yellow. So everybody switches to yellow, and yellow gets decided in this round. Um, now, this will be all of it. Converge, prepare, and commit. Decide, I already explained, is, is, is something we decided to add for extra tolerance to learn range attacks and for the finality certificates. Uh, but we, are, we also add a yet another step that is only executed in the first round. And this is for tolerance against censorship attacks from a very strong adversary. What can happen, if you realize from this step, is that this um, node that proposed yellow, if he doesn't have the lowest VRF ticket, he can force new rounds repeatedly until he holds the lowest ticket and then force everybody to switch to its block. So he can essentially censor. Um, well, of course, you know, not, he cannot do that if he controls less than 33% of the, of the power, but censorship attacks are very incentivized in Falcon and in many other chains because there is an inactivity punishment, right? So if they censor particular blocks for long enough, they can get some nodes out of the membership and essentially end up controlling the entire network. So we felt that we really wanted to have strong tolerance against censorship attacks. What's happening? Okay, let's reconnect. Ah. Let's see. All right, good enough, I guess. Is this visible? Okay, yeah, so we wanted a strong tolerance against censorship attacks. So the way we do that is we have this extra step that we call quality. And you can actually enforce many things with a quality step. But um, what we try to enforce is that, so we, we call this uh, that, a, that a proposal passes quality, is that it's a quality proposal, is that it has been proposed by a strong quorum of messages in the quality step. So in this, in this example, for example, where three nodes propose purple and one proposes yellow, yellow will not pass quality. So it will not be decided. What that means is that a rational adversary can censor some, some of the blog. You know, the rational adversary can still prevent termination deciding purple, but it cannot force deciding yellow. So censoring someone else becomes censoring yourself as well. So now we'll go back to the realm of Byzantine adversaries, and then termination should be guaranteed because a Byzantine adversary controls less than 33% by assumption. Um, so that will be all the steps that are necessary to run Gossip BFT. And then the finality exchange protocol. So having fast finality of Filecoin is great, but it's not as good if we cannot prove this fast finality to other systems or to layer twos, to like clients. That's why we have the finality exchange protocol. So essentially with the finality exchange protocol, um, a node that doesn't even run a full node, just maybe a like client, or not even a like client, he just needs to, like a node just receives um, an information of the, actually, let's go to the next one. Maybe I'll go back here. Okay, uh, yeah, so a node just needs to receive the uh, information on the public keys that are part of the power table, uh, and an initial a genesis power table, let's say, and the finality exchange protocol, the signatures in the finality exchange protocol sign the power table deltas, so the changes that happen to the power table, and the tipses that have been finalized. So if you keep getting consecutive finality exchange protocols, finality certificates from the finality exchange protocol, then that's all you are gonna need to verify the finality of a particular tipster in Falco. You don't even need to seek the entire chain or anything like that. The power table deltas are truncated as well. So it's not the same power table, the one we use for EC, for the specific consensus, and the one we use for F3. The reason why we truncate it is so that small changes to the power don't carry uh, a small, a big size in the finality certificate, because we want the finality certificates to be succinct. But anyways, changes to the power the, in the power tape, to the power of a participant are accumulated until they are big enough to be represented. So when they exceed uh, one byte of power, then we introduce them in the power table deltas. And with that, thanks to F3, now Bob can deposit in these exchanges within 15 seconds. And even more than that, the exchange doesn't even need to run a full node. 
or if the chain has been keeping track of like previous vanity certificate, even Bob can provide the vanity certificate himself and say, look, here's the proof that my deposit is final. You don't even need to run a full client. Uh, so in terms of the roadmap, the FNIT calculator, as I mentioned, it's already something that any application can build themselves because the information is readily available. The design and the analysis is already merged in the repo of the, FNIT, the Falcon Improvement Proposals, the FIPS. Uh, but we are also, it's, it's, it's simple enough that we are going to, we're just going to find time to like work a couple of weeks and provide the functionality ourselves in the API um, of the Falcon client. And then for F3, we have just merged last week the design, the full design. The implementation is undergoing, but uh, it should come into mainnet by the end of Q2, beginning of Q3. So that's it. Fast finality for Falcon is a reality, and you can get finalized as well. All right, thank you.